Hello there. My name's Marcus, and in the next 15 minutes, we're going to be traversing the entire universe. We're going to be taking a look at the birth of the moon. For many hundreds of years, the scientists of the world have battled to try and unlock the mystery of the universe, the mystery of the moon. The relationship between the earth, the rock that we stand on, and the moon, which orbits eye in the sky. And as I say, in the next 15 minutes we will explore this somewhat mystical object in the sky, in the birth of the moon. For hundreds of centuries, the moon has dazzled and baffled scientists in their quest to try and find out exactly where the moon came from. Some say that it is a myth. The myth goes along the lines of there was a god looking over them in the sky. But we know today that the moon is actually 4.5 billion years old. It is the only known natural satellite of the Earth and takes 27 days to orbit. The Moon is orbiting at over 2,200 miles per hour and is only 250,000 miles away. The image that you are looking at is an image of the early Earth before it was properly recognizable. You will notice the particles that have attracted itself purely by gravity. This was a time in the universe where the planets were growing, stars were forming, and it was a torrential, dangerous time for a young Earth to be trying to grow. During this process, the worst happened, and that worst occurrence was called the Big Splash. The giant impact hypothesis states that the moon was formed out of debris left over from a collision between the Earth and a body the size of Mars approximately four and a half billion years ago. The colliding body is sometimes called fear the mythical Greek Titan, who was the mother of Selene, the goddess of the moon. The giant impact hypothesis is the currently favoured scientific hypothesis for the formation of the moon. Supporting evidence includes the Earth's spin and moon's orbit, having similar orientations. Evidence of similar collisions in other star systems that are giant collisions and are consistent with the leading theories of the formation of the solar system. Finally, the stable isotope ratios of lunar and terrestrial rock are identical, implying a common origin. The situation wasn't to calm down for another few million years until finally the universe had found some kind of peace and harmony amongst the rocks, the planets and the stars in which were newly created. And there we have it, 4.5 billion years on that creation that nearly ended our world now supports it. So that leads me to the next question. Just what exactly does the moon do for us and do for the earth? Before we look into what causes the tides, it is important to note what gravity is. Gravity is an 
interaction between two physical bodies and these two physical bodies naturally attract each other. It is most commonly experienced as the agent that gives weight to objects with mass and causes them to fall to the ground when dropped. Gravitation is one of the four fundamental interactions of nature. So next I will explain exactly how the tides work in relation to the moon. So, to put it into perspective, what we've got, um, picture the apple as the moon and this baking tray of water as the earth um, and obviously the earth being round it's not quite accurate but it'll give you an idea as to exactly how the tides work. So what happens is the small amount of gravitational pull and the influence that the moon has on the earth but what happens is as the moon orbits the earth so say if this is the say if this is where you live and the tides come in nine times out of ten what is happening in the solar system is the moon is orbiting round to your side of the earth and the gravitational pull is enough in order to pull the water up shore so that, that is, so the physical effect is is to see the water actually travel further up in, up the beaches, uh, the closer to you on the you know, the water comes closer to you. And as the moon round to the other side of the earth, the water displaces on that side too, here in Britain sat outside on a warm sunny day in my deck chair and this will and this is uh, this continues to happen and in effect that is the effect of the tide the next influence that the moon has on the earth is a solar eclipse where the moon covers the sun's light perfectly resulting in a complete shroud from the sun for a moment here I explain what exactly happens during a solar eclipse so here's a little example of uh, exactly what um, the theory behind the uh, solar eclipse is so what I've got here let me just bring that into focus uh, is we've got a five pence piece which is you know just to put it into perspective really really small and this is this will do for this for this example um, it's obviously not accurately to scale but it will do so what happens is the distance between the Sun and the moon is such that the moon will appears big enough in relation to us in order to cover the, the Sun so what tends to happen is the moon once every uh, so many years uh, in different parts of the in different parts of the world this will happen uh, more recently in India back in 2009 is the moon comes along at its perfectly at that perfect distance and blocks out keep it as steady as possible and you'll notice that just around the edges you get a little bit of sun and then what happens is um, the sun is then revealed again and that is the basis of all solar eclipses on the uh, that we vis that we view from the earth so in essence that little bright ball in the sky that we all that we're all guilty of taking for granted would uh, was forever to be our savior our twin and something that i think we should all respect a little bit more the moon is not just there as a decoration to our skies but merely a creator of the seasons, 
the creator of some of the most spectacular astronomical phenomenon that we've ever seen. And I want to end you on this note. For those of you who aren't interested in astronomy, space, the moon, think of, think of it this way. Were for it not, for all the stuff out there, neither you or me would be here. We are, in effect, children of dying stars or, di or just already dead stars. Every bit of matter that makes us are remnants of, of a dying star, from the gold on your rings to the silver in your watches. And in the grand scheme of things, for those of you who don't take an interest in astronomy nor respect what goes on out there, I really hope you take heed Find, find the interest, because all of you have it in, in you too. Try and learn about a little bit more about where you're from on a, on a scientific level. And uh, I hope you guys found this interesting. As I did, I learned a lot making it. So, until next time, the truth is out there. <laughs>